Welcome back. I hope you had some nice holidays. Um, this week we are going to look at a medical device assembly. Uh, we had fun last time with uh, how to cook gingerbread cookies, but um, you know we got to get back to, uh, to the serious stuff now. Uh, medical devices very uh, very important that we get the right traceability on the operations that are done on the shop floor. Um, not only that we know every components that were used um, in, in a certain build, uh, but also know uh, which user performed which tasks. Um, and if you guess, let you do that. Uh, we even have a customer that used to build um, flight simulators, big, big, big machines that pivoted in building ventilators in under three months. Uh, and of course, um, VKS was used in that case to be able to get that traceability, but also to make sure they have a standardized process, uh, make sure they have the uh, proper user sign-offs throughout their build, uh, making sure only trained and certified operators could follow certain work instructions. Uh, VKS has all those features. So everything pertaining to um, the FDA 21 Part 11 compliance um, is in there, and that's what we will explore. And that example will look at mainly uh, a thermometer assembly. And uh, let me tell you, traceability is important again in medical device assemblies. Um, if you get something in your body, uh, you probably want to know where it comes from. Uh, so that's what um, this guidebook uh, includes. Uh, so first thing when I open this guidebook, I chose me all the unfinished work order for that job. So if somebody else starts to work on something and he has to leave, um, Maybe it's the end of the shift, it's the end of the day, that's fine. Somebody else can just pick it up and VKS will send them exactly where that operator was. Uh, was. Um, and all the information of who did which tasks in this work order will be tracked in the report. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to start a new one. So I will scan a work order number and this will get assigned to all the data that's going to be captured in VKS. And this work order already exists. So I'm going to pick a different one. Hit save and now we are ready to work. So got to clean up the workstation. We've got a little pictogram here telling us we need to wear the proper uh, safety equipment. Uh, top right corner shows us uh, the time we have for the job, uh, number of units we'll have to build, time we have for the setup and, and so on. I'm just going to move on and look at the components that I need to assemble together. So they're all laid out here and you can really see them visually in this case. So no more you're forced to go back on the bomb list and look at the items here. I mean, you can still use it through VKS. This bum list can also be pushed directly from your ERP if you want. Uh, you can access also a tool list if you need to. But otherwise, I mean, they're all displayed there at the right time of the assembly in your steps. So might as well just look at the picture, click on the droplet, and see the part numbers um, just getting highlighted on the right here. As I move away, uh, VKS will ask me again to get that traceability on the components that I'm assembling together. So if here I enter the batch number of the screen displays that I'm going to use in the assembly later on, if there is an issue uh, with that batch number, um, I'll be able to trace it back and know exactly which components they were used. Um, so here, let's scan in the rest of the information. You can even add validation in your form. Um, so let's say here I scan the wrong part. VKS is able to catch it. And let me know that this is wrong and ask me to fill that form again until I get it right. And that is the kind of um, of, um, of improvements that you're going to do as you um, build new revisions of your instructions. Uh, maybe you will figure out through the analysis of uh, VKS reports that people keep grabbing the wrong parts because maybe you have another similar looking electronic board. Um, so maybe your corrective action to that is creating a new revision in this time, making sure they are scanning the right part before uh, they can continue. Um, here again, very, very visual, pretty obvious what needs to be done. Try to use as much, as many pictures as you want. Um, otherwise, on the bottom right here, I can see the part number that I previously scanned. So I'm constantly remembered, um, or, I mean, reminded of what I need to work with. Um, on the right here, I can access some troubleshooting PDFs instructions. I could access the safety data sheets if I wanted. Um, I could link to maybe other SOPs pointing me to other guidebooks that shows me how to use certain tool or how to do certain processes. The goal here is to give the operator all the tools and information he needs to do his job properly without needing a supervisor or somebody else. Uh, so again, moving on, fairly, fairly obvious here. Use the tweezers. We've got a picture of the tweezers. 
moving on here, an alert, so another type of corrective action. Um, if you keep getting the same mistakes, uh, maybe one of your corrective action, one of your improvement is, again, to create a new revision and this time add an alert to open on step five um, to make sure the operator stops and reads that critical information before it continues its build. Uh, if I do have an issue uh, with the component, I need to reject it, there's a defect, what I can do is just access a non-conformance report on the side here. I just click on the side, it shows up on screen, I fill in the required information, maybe take a picture of the defect, uh, enter a certain quantity, add some details, part number, and all that information, again, will be saved in my report. But I can even set it up so it will be uh, sent as well via email to my quality department. They're made aware there's an issue they can come. Um, on the shop floor at my station. They will know uh, what guidebook I'm using, what product, who I am, when I started. So they get context. They know where to go to to solve the problem. Uh, here I'm using operation droplets to really convey the sequence of assembly I need to do. Also useful to show like maybe which buttons to push uh, on a computer screen or on a panel or which knobs and screws to insert maybe or to, to twist, something like that. Uh, simple quality confirmation, so very, very simple form, just a checkbox, uh, but now I have proven in my report that the user really ticked, uh, ticked that box, because in your report you get a copy of all the forms, you even know when the job started, when it ended, how much time it took, uh, the average time per unit, how, it lo uh, how, uh, how long it took to do this setup at the beginning, if I, clicks, uh, if I click on a PDF, if I press pause, if I send a message, everything is logged in the report, there's nothing for you to do. All the operator does is just follow his step-by-step -step procedure, copies the pictures he sees, answer the questions, and everything gets done automatically otherwise. Insert battery cell, push the button, and we arrive at the end, uh, finish up the assembly and perform the final inspection. So here we have a couple of questions. So yes, there is sound. Yes, the display works. Uh, you can ask simple pass-fail questions like this. Uh, you can ask for literal measurement. Maybe you ask for the voltage that uh, that the unit's giving you. And as you enter your number in there, VKS would be able to catch if it's out of range and, again, automate certain actions. Um, so as an operator, again, all you do is copy the pictures, answer the questions, but you wouldn't need to be trained on what happens if there's a fail or what number is out of range. You just answer the question and VKS will automatically do what needs to be done or at least tell you what to do. Um, it also ends uh, with uh, the requirement of a manager signature or supervisor or somebody from the quality department or whatever you want, you can control that. Um, so here somebody has to come over, scan their badge, enter their code, enter their signature. Um, their name will appear in your form and then it's going to let the user continue. Uh, and since I picked a fail here, I actually added validation on this form, I think. So if I hit save, there you go, I've got a custom message opening up on screen. Please dispose the unit in the red bin, fill the following in CR form. And then it's asking me to fill that information. So I didn't even have to click on it. I know what to do with my unit, put it in the red bin, fill that in, maybe take a picture, add some comments. I can make some of those fields required if I want. This gets saved, this gets logged, qualities uh, know about it. And I can start working on unit number two. And that's about it for, uh, for again, uh, that medical device assembly here because contains all the features you need um, to respect that FDA 21 part 11 compliance 21 CFR um, if you need help with adapting your instructions um, with those requirements just let us know contact your um, your customer success representative uh, it's gonna be a pleasure for for us to help you get that running so until then uh, have a nice day have a nice night uh, whatever whatever it is